So this gives us the two components, the horizontal and the vertical components of this resultant vector. All right, now probably what we care about the most, though, is the length of this arrow over here, the length of this arrow that's pointing northeast. Um, well, it might be that you already know enough uh, about um, triangles to already figure out how long this arrow is over here. We can just use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out how long this arrow is over here. Comes out to be 11.6 meters. So overall, our overall displacement from the initial point at the final point is 11.6 meters from the initial point. This distance here was 11.6 meters. Notice that it's not just 5 plus 7. You can't just add 5 and 7 here because these are not parallel vectors. Um, it turns out that we're not 12 meters from where we started, but just 11.6 meters. Um, by uh, working out the components, we were able to work that out. All right, so you can start to see here the basis of what I've been calling this clever trick that physicists use. Um, very often, physicists have to work with two vectors that are not parallel to each other. Well, their trick is that they'll break those vectors into components. And then the two horizontal components are parallel, and they can just add those. And the two vertical components are parallel, so they can just add those. And that gives you the horizontal and vertical components of the overall or the resultant vector. And then it just takes a little bit more knowledge about triangles to go back from the components to um, go back to the overall resultant vector. Um, and also, we could use a little bit of trigonometry to figure out what this angle is um, over here. It turns out that this angle is about 48 degrees. All right, now, please don't worry if, you're, if you didn't see how I got the 11.6. And please don't worry if you didn't see how I got the 48 degrees. That's the purpose of this whole series of videos. In this series of videos, we're going to learn how to get this number and this number. Um, so I don't expect you to be able to figure out all these numbers right now. Right now, I'm just trying to show you why it's useful to have the skills that we're going to be picking up in these videos. It's useful to have these skills um, because this allows us to combine vectors that are not parallel with each other. Um, so again, if we can figure out the horizontal and vertical components of the overall vector, we're going to um, soon have the skills that would allow us then to figure out the magnitude of the overall vector and also the angle for the overall vector. So again, our clever trick is that there's no simple way to add two vectors that are not parallel to each other, but if we break them into components, then the components will be parallel to each other, and then we can combine those components. Uh, and then once we know the components of the overall vector, we can use a little bit more geometry or trigonometry to go back to figuring out the length of the overall vector. Uh, remember that in this example, we broke the vectors both into horizontal and vertical components. And that's usually what we're going to be focusing on here. Uh, but the components don't have to be horizontal and vertical. You can break uh, a vector into any two perpendicular components. But for the time being, we're going to focus on horizontal and vertical components. All right. Uh, again, let me remind you that you should not panic if you're not understanding every single thing I'm talking about at this point. I'm just trying to give you a, a brief, quick overview of why the material that we're covering here is important. Uh, pretty soon, we're going to get into the nuts and bolts of how to do the calculations. I want to give you one more quick example of why breaking vectors into components is useful. Um, just as motivation for what we're doing. Um, so now let's imagine somebody who's starting at this initial point. They're starting at this initial point and they're walking six meters in a direction that's 20 degrees above the horizontal. Six meters in a direction that's 20 degrees above the horizontal. Uh, and then when they've done with the six meters, um, by the way, I noticed that this arrow looks kind of curvy, but um, this is supposed to be a straight line, so I hope that you'll forgive my sloppiness. This is supposed to be a straight 6 meters, 20 degrees. So let's imagine this is a straight line, 6 meters in this direction. Uh, and then they walk for 4 more meters. And now they're walking for 4 meters at an angle of 25 degrees to the left of the vertical. So now they're walking to the left of the vertical at an angle of 25 degrees. So this angle here is 25 degrees. Uh, and then they eventually get to this final point. And the question is, what's their overall displacement? What's their resultant displacement? All right, um, well, why don't you pause the video and try to draw the overall displacement vector? Can you draw the overall displacement vector? I hope you gave that a shot. Remember that the overall resultant displacement vector starts at the initial point and points to the final point. Well, here's our initial point, and here's the final point. So here's the overall resultant vector. This shows our overall displacement from the initial point. We'd like to know how far is this final point from the initial point. We want to know how far this final point is from the initial point. Uh, well, I think it's really obvious here that you can't just add 6 and 4, right? Hopefully it's very clear that you can't just say that the length of this line is just 6 plus 4. 
If these two lines had been parallel to each other, then we would know that we could just add 6 plus 4 and get 10. But there's no reason at all to, um, to think that we can just add the 6 and the 4 here. These uh, two directions were obviously not at all parallel to each other. All right. Well, once again, the physicists have this clever trick of breaking vectors into components. Um, how do you break something into components? Well, you draw a right triangle that has the overall vector as its hypotenuse. Well, we'll cover that in more detail later. But you draw a right triangle that has the overall vector as its hypotenuse. So here's our first overall vector. Our, six, our first overall vector was the 6 meters um, at an angle of 20 degrees with the horizontal. So let's draw a right triangle. Here's a right triangle that has this overall vector as the hypotenuse. Um, if you've never heard of hypotenuses before, don't panic. We'll talk more about that later. Okay, so um, now we want to figure out what the horizontal leg and the vertical leg of this triangle are. Um, now, at this point, you probably don't know how to figure that out, so I'll just tell you. It turns out that the horizontal leg of that triangle is 5.6 meters. That represents 5.6 meters to the east, doesn't it? Because the person was walking 5.6 meters to the east. And it turns out that the vertical leg of this triangle is 2.1 meters. Again, I don't expect you to know how to figure out this number yet, but you should know what direction this 2.1 meters is in. Can you see what direction the 2.1 meters is in? Remember, the 2.1 meters represents this vertical leg of the triangle. Well, that represents north. Clearly, this person was walking 6 meters north and east, if we want to think in terms of compass directions. This person is walking 6 meters in a somewhat northeasterly direction, 5.6 meters east and 2.1 meters north. Again, don't worry about where I got these numbers. I'll explain that later in the videos. Um, for now, just take it on faith that we can figure out these two legs of the triangle. And we're going to see how it's helpful to know those two legs of the triangle. Um, so let's say we know those two legs of the triangle. Um, and now we have to break the 4 meter into components. So that's how would we break that 4 meter into components. Well, again, the trick is we need to draw a right triangle that has the overall vector as its hypotenuse. We have to draw a right triangle that uses that overall vector as its hypotenuse. Maybe you should pause the video and see if you can draw the components of this 4 meter vector. Maybe you gave that a shot. Well, here's the components. Here's a right triangle that has the overall vector as its hypotenuse. And now I'll just tell you that the vertical leg of that triangle is 3.6 meters. I don't expect you to know how to get that 3.6 meters yet, but is, what, what direction is this 3.6 meters pointing in? That should be clear. This is 3.6 meters pointing to the north, right? This vertical leg here should be going north because overall this person was walking in a northwest direction. And now it turns out that this leg of the triangle is 1.7 meters. 1.7 meters west. Because overall, on this leg of the trip, the person was walking 4 meters in a northwesterly direction. 4 meters in a northwesterly direction. It turns out that 3.6 meters of that is to the north, and 1.7 meters of that is to the west. Again, don't worry about how we would get these numbers. Just take it on faith that those are the sides of the triangle. Um, but now you should be able to figure out what the overall um, horizontal component is for the resultant vector. Well, overall, we know that first the person walked 5.6 meters east. And then they walked 1.7 meters west. I hope you can see that it makes sense to subtract these two numbers. The person first walked 5.6 meters to the east. And then they went back 1.7 meters west. So we certainly wouldn't want to add 5.6 and 1.7. Instead, we need to say we walked 5.6 meters east, and then we lost some of that ground by going back to the west. So overall, we've only gone 3.9 meters to the east. All right, so in this case, these two horizontal components were not parallel. They were anti-parallel to each other. That was no big deal. Um, it's very easy to uh, combine vectors that are parallel by adding them. And it's also very easy to combine vectors that are anti-parallel by subtracting them. It's only when the vectors are neither parallel nor anti-parallel that we're in trouble. Um, so these two horizontal components, um, one was parallel, uh, one was east and one was west. So they were anti-parallel. So we could easily subtract them to find the overall horizontal distance. Horizontal on the board, anyway. Uh, that's what we're interpreting as east. All right, and now how about um, our vertical or north-south displacement? Well, it looks like, first of all, we went 2.1 meters north. 
and then we went 3.6 meters north. Well, it should be pretty plain that we can just add the 2.1 and the 3.6 to find that overall, our overall displacement is 5.7 meters north. First we went 2.1 meters north, then we went another 3.6 meters north, so overall we've gone 5.7 meters north of our initial point. All right, so now we have some good information about our overall displacement from the initial point. Our overall displacement um, is 3.9 meters east of where we started and 5.7 meters north. 